What's going on everyone, it's Rifle here, and thanks for checking out this Fallout 76 video. In this one I'm going to be going over the outfits that you can only get by completing events and dailies in a specific region. These outfits are not that well known, and I thought it'd be nice to bring them more to the light so more players have more of a reason to grind out the events in Fallout 76. There is quite a bit to do. Keep in mind that these outfits are completely random though to drop. Just because you complete the event doesn't mean you'll get one of these specific outfits to drop. It is possible, however, just unlikely. It could take you 100 or more completions until you get one of these. If you could, maybe sometime comment and confirm what event or daily you got your outfit or outfits from to help players understand it is possible for these to drop. I appreciate it if you do take the time letting us know for extra confirmation. I wanted to say first off, I wouldn't know all this information if it wasn't for the Reddit user Soggy Lint's post. He provided an amazing spreadsheet of all the known outfits that can only be obtained from an event or daily quest. So huge thanks to him for sharing this with the community and personally myself. I'm just going to be passing this information more around the community because I feel like a lot of players once again are missing out not knowing about these outfits. Also wanted to say thanks to this guy. Yeah, I know. It's spelled a little differently. That's his gamer tag over on Xbox, and he did say that is how it's pronounced. But yeah, once again, big thanks to this guy because he helped tremendously with showing off all these outfits that you can only get from events or dailies around in specific regions. So you all know exactly what it is that has a chance at dropping. I mean, there could possibly be more out there that just haven't been discovered quite yet. But for now, I'm gonna be going over the majority of the ones that are known at the moment. As you can see, with this amazing spreadsheet, if you take a look to the left-hand side, it's noted and says anything not labeled event or daily only can be found elsewhere in the game. And all events listed from that particular region have a chance of rewarding you with one of the items. So yes, some of these can be found elsewhere besides just events or dailies. But to keep things simple, I'm going to be going over the only ones that can be gotten from events or dailies only. And maybe in the future I'll go over the others that are found elsewhere once I figure out where elsewhere is. I know they can also be potential drops from the events and dailies, but they aren't specifically only dropped from there. They're found also located around on the map. And I'll figure out their locations, and sometime in the future I'll make a video over that. But yeah, I'll shut up now. Let's go ahead and get into these rare outfits. Anyway, starting with the forest region outfits, we have the forest camo jumpsuit. As you can see, here is what it looks like. Not too shabby. I'm actually preferring this way more than just the regular old army fatigues that you can get. And you can also receive a special kind of responder fireman uniform and helmet from this region. Keep in mind these will be separate drops. Now these are able to be a potential drop from two dailies, Ecological Balance and Strange Brew. You can also get these from the events Back on the Beat, Collision Course, Feed the People, Fertile Soil, Leader of the Pack, Project Beanstalk, Tea Time, and the Path to Enlightenment. There is quite a bit to complete in this region to get these as a potential drop. Up next here, we have the outfits you can get from the Toxic Valley region. Starting with the Western outfit. Keep in mind that the hat doesn't come with the outfits. However, you can find the cowboy hat along with a lot of other hats up here, a little above Anchor Farms. But yeah, up here, there's actually an Alice in Wonderland tea party easter egg here. And on the chairs around the table where they were having their little party at, as you can see, teapot and whatnot. But yeah, you can see a black cowboy hat on this chair, a black cowboy hat on the back of this chair, witch's hat on this one, and you can also find a bowler hat over here and a chef's hat on the table. I mean, there's quite a bit here, so if you didn't know, well, now you know. But anyways, back to the Western outfit. This is what it looks like, and once again, it can take quite a bit of grinding to be able to actually get this as a reward. There is also a Western outfit in chaps that can be dropped too as a reward. The main difference between these, you know, is the chaps, but yeah. Anyways, also in this region, you can get another unique responder fireman uniform and helmet. As for the events that these outfits will be rewarded to you are from Protest March, Swarm of Suitors, Patrol Duty, Manhunt, Jailbreak, Grafton Day, Dogwood Die Off, and lastly for the dailies that these can be dropped from in this region are Big Game Hunt, 
buried with honor, pass the buck, target rich environments, and lastly throw of the grill. So yeah, that's all for the Toxic Valley region. Good luck to any of you that are trying to obtain those outfits. Next up here for the Savage Divide regional outfits that can drop are the Brotherhood of Steel jumpsuit. As you can see, it has a nice touch of the Brotherhood of Steel logo on the front pocket and a larger logo of Brotherhood of Steel on the back. Next up here, we have the white powdered jumpsuit. I'm digging the color scheme to this and the way it looks overall. I feel like it stands out from your typical outfits that you see in Fallout 76. It's pretty unique. And lastly, that is known from this region is the White Springs jumpsuit. And this one looks really, really nice too. The simplicity on this one and how the font is, I feel like, is what makes it great. And these will only have a chance at dropping from the events One Violent Night, Distinguished Guest, Guided Meditation, the messenger and I do know the messenger does switch up on the map it will be in a different region at times so on that note I don't know for sure if the messenger is in another region if you're going to get these specific outfits it could be something different because the messenger as some of you may know does switch up its spots it's not just set in one area but anyways lastly you're able to get these outfits from uranium fever too I mean go figure Uranium Fever event is literally right by White Springs Resort. Anyways, next region that I'll be going over will be the Mire. Personally, one of my favorites is dropped from this region. That there is only like a 0.2% chance of these dropping. Awful odds. But keep in mind, as you can see in the top of the event selection, it was noted that all events do have a chance at rewarding any of the region's cosmetics, which the outfits that you can obtain from these events and dailies are Tattered Field Jacket, as you can see, looks pretty unique, and I could see this being perfect on an explosive build character. Next up, I have the Traveling Leather Coat. Personally, my favorite event outfit we can obtain in the game. I have to say, I love this outfit with the assault gas mask that you can purchase from the Sutton train station vendor. Anyways, lastly up for the event outfits that is known in the mire anyways, there is a leather coat you can get, which sadly I didn't have it nor knew anyone that could show this off. But basically, it's the traveling leather coat just without the backpack. Anyways, as for the events that you can get these from, starting with the dailies, we have Idle Explosives, Playtime, Queen of the Hunt, and Waste Not. As for the regular old events you can get these from are Always Vigilant, Heart of the Swamp, Irrational Fear, and lastly, It's a Trap which once again, all of these are located in the Mire region. And keep in mind, if you're wondering where any of these events that I have mentioned in the past are, you can just pause it on these screenshots that I pull up here on the wiki because it does say the location of them. You just gotta look up that location if you don't know where that is either. But yeah, I thought that would be a way to make it so I could jam all of this into one video. If I just sat here and explained where everything was and how to do each one of them, this video would be way, way too long, I feel like. But I mean, it's pretty straightforward. You just gotta do the events around in the specific region that has the outfit that you are trying to get. And as for Cranberry Bog and Ash Heap region, there hasn't been any event specific outfit rewarded from that area. You can be rewarded different colored asylum worker uniforms and not to mention hats, but you can also find those around as well in Fallout 76. I just don't know the exact locations. I know you can find the brown asylum worker uniform in the penitentiary, but yeah, I don't know all of the locations for these, but I do know they can be potential rewards from events and dailies around in the Cranberry Bog. And as for the Ash Heap area, you can have potential chance at getting minor uniforms and outfits and whatnot, but nothing so far anyways has been found super specific from the events over there. You can also find minor uniforms and hats just laying around areas once again. But yeah, that's it for his spreadsheets. There is two others that I can add as well as a flight helmet. In case you don't know, you can get the bomber jacket from turning in technical data, which is a part of the Brotherhood of Steel quest. Which, in case you don't know, you can start that quest by going to Abby's Bunker 
on the map as you can see it's located over here and once you're finally over here you just want to use this terminal to open the bunker door and then head on inside Abby's bunker and then from here you're just going to want to find her terminal that'll be inside one of the rooms down here and when you're on the terminal you just want to choose the selection Fort Defiance and that should start up the beginning of the Brotherhood of Steel questline and after so long within the questline you'll get to a part called Forbidden Knowledge and this is the part where you have to turn in technical data, which you'll find around in files and desks. If you ever go to launch a nuke in one of the silos, you'll find tons of files which will contain technical data. And keep in mind, you can keep turning in technical data and completing this quest over and over. You're just going to have to make sure your other technical data is stored in your stash because if you have it all in your inventory at once, it'll turn in all of your technical data at once. You'll get what I'm saying when you actually go and do this. If you've already done this and you know what I'm saying, well, yeah. You want to make sure, once again, you have just one technical data within your inventory. But yeah, as you can see, you can be rewarded the bomber jacket. You can also be rewarded the forest camo jumpsuits as well from here. As well as army fatigues and scribe uniforms. But other than that, as for apparel, I don't really know what else you can be rewarded from here. And by the way, huge thanks to my buddy Squirrelock Holmes for providing this footage to show off that it is possible to get the bomber jacket from the technical data. Let's just say he did turn in quite a bit to see some of the rewards. He was also rewarded the forest camo jumpsuit. Sadly, he didn't get that recorded though, but I do know for sure it is possible to get it from here. There seems to be quite a bit of rare outfits that you can get from this. So definitely keep this in mind to do if you are in search of unique apparel and in case you're wanting to complete the bomber jacket outfit and get the flight helmets you can find that over here at the ranger district office area over here at the edge of cranberry bog and it'll be located in this room inside the building and keep in mind it won't always be on this medical bed sometimes you're gonna have to hop servers until it does appear but while you're hopping servers you may find you some medical goggles if you're in search of those too Okay, so the last and final unique apparel that I'll be showing you how to get is the Mr. Fuzzy costume as well as the Mr. Fuzzy mining helmet. But it is way more of a challenge to get this cat costume. Golly. Anyways, you can get these over at Camden Park. It can be quite a journey to get over here at the bottom left of the map. But once you are here, if this is your first time approaching Camden Park, you should get a quest called Mistaken Identity. And you will have to do this quest in order to get the costume. Sooner or later though, within the quest, you will clock in. And that is how you start playing these games that reward you with tokens. Now keep in mind, the Mr. Fuzzy outfit, if you are going for that, costs a whopping 450 tokens. This is a grind, I will say, because you only get three tokens after each little game that you can do here. At least the rewards aren't that bad. I mean, you can have a potential chance at getting a legendary. You also can get some caps, as well as super stem packs, regular stem packs. I mean, you get the point. The loot isn't all that bad. And not to mention, you get 300 experience completing each game. Anyways, where you go to actually get this Mr. Fuzzy costume, which is once again going to be a grind to get. 450 tokens in total in order to get this outfit. Whew. But yeah, it's located right over here behind the trading post in this shack next to the boss. As you can see on this terminal, you can see the prizes that you can get. And at the bottom there, we have the Mr. Fuzzy costume for 150 tokens and the Mr. Fuzzy costume head for 300 tokens. But in a way, it is a good thing for the grind being so time consuming because you're gonna look really unique and different around in the wasteland. And as for the Mr. Fuzzy mining helmet, sure, it's not nearly as much of a challenge to get, but nonetheless, at least it's something different from your regular old mining helmet. And also something that's pretty cool about this place, Camden Park is an actual amusement park that you can go to in real life in West Virginia. Most of these locations around on the Fallout 76 map are real life locations that we could go to. It's pretty cool. But yeah, that's about wrapping up this video, everyone. Hopefully you found this enjoyable and learned something new from this. If you did, maybe consider leaving a like. The support is always greatly appreciated. And hey, maybe if you want, stick around and subscribe for more Fallout 76 content. Of course, that's always totally up to you. I'm out of here, though. Thanks for taking the time to watch and listen. Until next time, peace.